Good day, aviators. You join you with the Aero Technicians YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to explain how to become a helicopter engineer or a B1.3 licensed engineer. So, let, without further ado, let's get to the video. This day, other than the aviation six pack and the aircraft. And the There are two main things uh, to know when it comes to any engineering, any EASA license engineering. That is basic knowledge and basic experience. Now, if we break down basic knowledge, basic knowledge is divided into two types, which is approved schools, aka part one, food seven, and non-approved schools, or just modular courses. So the difference between these two is the time uh, that it takes for you to become an engineer so first thing part 147 or a approved school uh, upon graduation you'll have to have three years of basic experience in order to apply for your aircraft maintenance license and non-approved schools or modular courses it will take you as long as five years to apply for your uh, engineering license now the second bit in your basic knowledge is your modules or EASA modules or uh, if you're living outside Europe, every country has its civil aviation authority. So you have to contact them to know about the modules, but all the modules are more or less the same except for America, which does FAA or Canada, some parts of Canada does FAA. They have a different examination system. Now in order to apply for an aircraft maintenance license you need to have a certain number of modules passed and the pass mark is 75 and there are 13 modules so i'm not going to describe all the modules and i'm going to leave a screenshot down here so you can see at your leisure post the video have a look and we'll get to the next point so i've talked about basic knowledge now let me jump into basic experience now you will go to a school let it be 147 or a modular school and then you do your course and after graduation uh from the course you need to find a job now where do you get this experience usually if your 147 is connected to a 145 or an mro by that being said mro is maintenance repair and overhaul facility so if it is a uh, if it is linked to an MRO, you might you you might have a chance of getting a job in their MRO, but most of the time you might have to go to external companies or external MROs to get a job to fulfill your three years or five years experience. So now, how to find a job? Uh, one of the things I recommend I'll put them put the links down in the description, please. Uh, go to the link and check it out. So LinkedIn is one of the best sources to go and search for your jobs. Uh, may, let it be the first job or may, if you're a seasoned technician. See, I, I, I find LinkedIn to be a resourceful source to find jobs. Or uh, aviationjobsearch.com is also a good source. Now, you got your experience. You also need a way of recording your experience. So there in EASA, there is a, uh, we we have logbooks now a logbook has its date on it and then the type of the aircraft the engine you're working and a description area for you to write your experience so there is a small area where your engineer has to sign or be 1.3 engineer has to sign saying that you have uh, successfully completed the task so that that's how you actually fulfill your experience requirement third one is by getting these modules or by getting uh, your experience you're still not an aircraft maintenance engineer because you just have a blank aml now upon completion your basic experience and also basic knowledge you apply for your yasa license and then to the civil aviation you're working towards in europe we have easa bodies in every country so you can if it is uh 
if it, it is UK, you have to apply for the CAA. And if it is Italy, you have to apply to their um, governing body. Now, a big misconception that the new technicians have is like once you complete it you send it to EASA. No, EASA doesn't give you licenses. They are the regulation that controls all these governing bodies. So you'll get an EASA license from that governing body which means if you if you are working towards your EASA modules and if you are doing it in Italy you'll have to send it to the Civil Aviation Authority of Italy not to EASA itself. So let's just say you completed this step, you have a blank license on your hand now. Now, what do you need to become a proper aircraft engineer who can sign off a section of an aircraft? So that would be, you would require something called TR or your type rating. A type rating is a course that familiarizes you with the whole aircraft you're working on. This video I'm doing is for helicopters. So let's see Augusta Westland 139. You'll be working on it for three years. So now your company has to give you the Augusta Westland type rating, which will teach you on all the subsystems. And it also will give you the practical knowledge and this type rating courses consist of two parts, which is uh, your theoretical knowledge, which give you in-depth familiarization of all the systems. And the second bit is your practical training. And also still you you can't sign off an aircraft after completing this type rating course. You have to go, some, uh, go through something called OJT on the job training. This usually they give to fresh engineers and this ha you have to complete it on your first type rating so when when you have your type rating course your company will put you on a on job training on the job training process uh, which will which will give you uh, a familiarization or you'll be working with a seasoned engineer in order to get your basic experience as an engineer because so far you have experience as a technician or a mechanic but now you have to get that experience of a working engineer so you'll work under a seasoned engineer he'll he'll teach you how to troubleshoot and stuff like that so you show that experience maybe in my last company it was six months so you do your six months of ojt as a engineer but under a seasoned engineer and then you get your type rating endorsed in your air, aircraft maintenance license and then hola if there's a job in your company you can work as an aircraft maintenance engineer or a helicopter maintenance engineer now so usually what happens is after you get your full aircraft maintenance license they won't give you to work on all the sections of the aircraft they might start you with a, uh, with the wings so they'll give you wings okay you take care of the wings or they might give you um you know the flight controls so start working from flight controls so you gain experience and by the time you have a lot of experience as an engineer then you will be liable to sign on all the systems but there's another misconception there's part b engineers and part c engineers or category b engineers or category c engineers now category b 1.1 engineers can only work on sections of the aircraft they'll be given okay you take care of engines and wings so they'll do their tasks and they'll sign off sign it off so these engineers can only work on systems but category c engineers or in a 145 environment Category C engineer is the engineer who's responsible for the whole aircraft for the aircraft to go out of the hangar. So he has to sign for the whole aircraft. These B1.1, 1.3 engineers will sign for subsystems and they'll give the work package to category C engineer to sign off the aircraft. So this is how to become a helicopter engineer or a fixed wing also is the same procedure. You just your experience will be different you're working in a helicopter environment you'll be working with uh, gas turbine turbo shaft engines um, or 
if you're working in a fixed wing aircraft you can work turboprop gas turbine engines and also stuff like that Pist there's also piston categories but i'm not going to talk about them i'm only talking about turbine categories where the engines which consist of a gas turbine engine so this is what i wanted to bring you hope it cleared out some of your problems but if if my video was not there you can still put down questions in the comment section i'll try to answer all the questions you have of my to the best of my ability so i'll bring another video in due course until then keep fixing